so a lot of people want to get into programming and you know they're, they're students and stuff and one of the challenges that people have is you know a lot of these jobs like if you go on um, google's website and you look at some of the jobs that google has um, like to work at youtube they require uh, experience so how do you get job experience if you don't have experience what advice can you give people like should they build their own portfolios by doing projects is that something that can help them get noticed so if if i may use myself as an example um way back in 96 97 when i first started working as a programmer i've always had an interest in the game industry and incidentally the first company I worked for, so 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 just a, a, a little bit of a side note here. I started working for a startup company in Silicon Valley back in in ninety seven, and then that startup company was bought by Verisign, which is how I ended up in Verisign. Um, but yeah, it was a payments portal, internet security stuff. But but in any case, the the building that I was working at was in Redwood Shores, and to the right of it was the EA headquarters building, and it was right outside my window. So. It, all day when I was sitting at work, I would look at their headquarters, and go like, "Man, EA." <laughs> <laughs> so, and and then and then when when I went downstairs and I went out in the cafeteria, the cafeteria would face the Sega headquarter building for the U.S. division. Sega. Oh. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I would sit there like, "Man, Sega." <laughs> um, so. But but that was that was to me uh, almost like a daily reminder of where I would like to end up in my career or in, in in my life, and I eventually ended up there. But it was not an easy road. So I could obviously program, but but there's there's a there's a huge difference be, between someone who just learned programming in class and wrote a couple of whatever projects you work on in school versus professional code. Uh, even even now, sometimes I wonder, wait, does this make the code professional or not? There's some standards that you have to adhere to, but but um, there, there's a huge difference uh, in, in the way you write code. And so what I would do, I would I would look at job ads for game companies. There was back then, it wasn't even on the internet back then; it was still in the papers. <laughs> but because it was, you know, Bay Area, California, there were plenty of startup game developers there, and so I would send out my resume and get interviews and i would go into interview I, I remember my very first game programming interview i bombed it so bad it was it was embarrassing but what i did was i i talked to those guys even when the interview was was done i i said but i if you have a few more minutes can i ask some questions and i asked questions specifically about the things that i failed or that i thought i had failed during the interview and what 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 that did was it gave me some insight and like oh okay these are the particular skills that they're looking for and so then i did another interview focusing on those particular skills making sure i had those nailed and then my next interview was so much better not good enough but a huge improvement and then i asked okay what did i do wrong here what what or what do you think i need to work on and and sometimes people said like oh you should or shouldn't ask these things through interviews but they're people just like you and me, and if they see that you're motivated and and you have the willingness the willingness to learn, it carries a lot of weight. And so after my second interview, I learned so much more. I learned about things in programming that I didn't even know existed in programming. You know, certain type of data structure, certain type of algorithms, things like that. And it, it may sound intimidating, but it's really it's it's just another unknown thing. And once the unknown becomes known. All of a sudden, it's not that difficult anymore. Um, and there, and there are a number of things, and I, I suppose we can talk about that in a little bit later. But there are a number of things that you do, and it's called, well, I call it reinventing the wheel. But you should still do it for very good reason, and and we'll we'll we'll, we'll get into that, I suppose. But um, but in any case, so then the third interview went really well, but I didn't accept. So they actually made an offer, and I didn't accept. Because I didn't want to move to Utah. Utah. <laughs> Utah. Yeah. I don't even remember how I got that interview, but they called me and like, oh, hey, we're, we're, we're looking for some people and you might be in, you know, we got your resume. I was like, yeah, sure. But the most important part, what I, what I did there was that I would do my work, I would come home, and, and every spare time, every spare moment that I, that I had, even um, instead of sleeping, I would spend time working on my own games. 
I would write game engines. I would write uh, rendering engines. I would work on games, demos, anything that seems interesting in a game industry. Like I would play a game. Like for example, I was playing Diablo, and I'm like, man, I must be able to make a game like that. And then, then I I made a Diablo like uh, uh, the, well action RPG type game, yeah. and then I start and then I started playing EverQuest. I'm like, oh, I gotta play EverQuest. So so here here is the thing with EverQuest. So I wrote my own MMO on my own. It took me I, I think about a year and a half, and it was it was so good. Well, I thought at the time it was so good that uh, my neighbor who was an investor got his investors together and they wanted to fund me to start my own company to wow. to publish the game and release the game. Wow. And I kept telling those guys in that interv well, interview, the meeting, whatever we had, I kept telling them, I was like, look, the artwork that I'm using is artwork from Neverwinter Nights and Counter-Strike because <laughs> I'm not an artist. I can't make models. Right. So I'm just using the, the publicly available models and, and, and animations there, and I'm just using them just to demo it. And this one guy, he kept going, oh, my, man, your artwork looks so good. I'm like, but it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but so so while that was going on, I got an interview at EA and went with Shores. And so I went there and we were talking about a number of things and eventually we ended up talking because I had no game development experience. I had a couple of years of programming under my belt, but no game development or no professional game development. And so eventually we ended up talking about the games that I was working at home. And and and, and the interview said, Well, okay, I think we've talked enough. Why don't you go home, grab your laptop and show us your game? I was like, yeah, great, sure. So went home, went back the next day, showed my game, and I, I got an offer. <laughs> That's how wow. I got into EA. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it was so so when people go like, oh, you need experience to get in there. Professional experience is is typically always uh, preferred, but if you show if you show skill, motivation. If you can show something like, hey, look, I spent the last six months every weekend or, or every day working on this, and here is what I have. And, you know, you build your own portfolio with stuff that you have. It it carries a lot of weight. It, and sometimes just getting your foot in the door is enough because once you're in, it's up to you whether you can stay in or not. So, yeah.